The hell day is it? It's Monday. It's Monday. <laughs> Don't Monday. sound so enthusiastic, Man, I'm Tom. Sleepy. I'm fucking sleepy. <laughs> Sleeping, I slept all night. Cat jumped on me at like five o'clock in the morning. Yeah, she jumped on me too. Yeah, it's you know she does she does that thing where she's just kind of like, hey, it seems like it's been such a long time. Are you guys awake yet? Yeah. And then you like you peek out of the blanket and her big old black eyes are looking yeah, at you. She's looking at you. <laughs> time to get up. Yeah. Got a cat that wakes you up. It's time to get up. Yeah, it's, like, oh, shit. it's like here, I'm gonna make some biscuits on your shoulder. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's kind of what yeah. she does. All right, so. Uh, you did. You saw like the last half of this movie, I think. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it was a good movie. It, I I would have liked to have seen the whole thing, but okay, you got to be ready for this kind of movie. It's a <laughs> it's a painful movie, kind of like Joker. You know, yeah, you were joking, kinda, you're watching a dude go fucking crazy, and you're like, oh man, you know, bad <laughs> shit happens to him, and then he does bad <laughs> shit, and then um. <laughs> I liked it though. It was kind of like a, uh, it was a low budget movie, but it was done right. It was, I yeah. gotta say, I would go yeah. so far as to say I loved this movie. Yeah. I thought kinda, it was fantastic. It kind of, in certain ways, kind of reminded me of Videodrome. There was little, it did have a little bit of that vibe yeah. to it, didn't it? Yeah, it's kind of like Videodrome and Joker had a baby. <laughs> with just other shit. What and, platform and like, is this? Uh, it's on Hulu. That's where yeah. we watched it. It might be on Amazon Prime too. I'm not entirely sure, but we watched it. Uh, we watched it on Hulu. It's worth watching. It's good. Yeah. So you just gotta be in the mood for it. Yeah. So this came out this year, 2020. Um, it's called Rent a Pal. It's weird because a while back, we watched the trailer for it a long time ago, like when we were looking for new movies to watch, and I was like, "Ooh, that looks like a possibility," because that looks like pretty good. And then we just, for whatever reason, we never got around to watching it. And then last night, it was kind of between this one and one other one on Hulu. And I was like, I think I'm kind of more in the psychological horror kind of mood. And that one looked kind of cooler. So where the other one was kind of more a horror comedy. So I was, so I started watching it and I was immediately like sucked in. So the story behind this one, um, Will Wheaton is in it and uh, Brian Landis Fokins. They're kind of the two main characters. Now this was uh, written, directed, and edited by a dude named John Stevenson. I'm not sure if this is the first movie or not, but it's if it is, it's like, wow, dude, okay, good job. But, um, so, it's set in 1990. I thought it was the late 80s, but it's 1990. So, basically, you got Brian Landis Fokins. He's playing this dude named David. Now, David seems like, I mean, he seems like a sweet, like a nice enough dude, but he's a little bit pitiful in the sense that He's 40 years old. Um, he looks he's, a lot older. Yeah, he, he's kind of like very yeah. hangdog and very yeah. kind of schlubby. Yeah. Um, you know, and he has kind of been forced by life into living in his mom's basement. His mom has dementia and there's nobody else in the family to take care of her and all this other kind of shit. He, so he can't work. He's basically her full-time caregiver. And he, you know, definitely has a little bit of resentment about that. But he's a good guy at heart, at least at first. <laughs> now since it's 1990 and tinder and the internet and shit like that weren't really a thing yet he uh subscribes to this weird video dating service called i think it's called video rendezvous or something like that These things were fucking horrible i know and this was a real yeah. thing like yeah. that people did it was like yeah. a whole service you would go into a little studio and they would film a video of you talking yeah. about yourself and then they would put all the clips together and you would go and kind of like you'd rent the video you'd go home and watch yeah. it and then you, there was a little booklet and you'd fill out it's like a video rental fucking yeah. store but it was just people trying to hook up and they were expensive back in the day and it was all fucking middle aged people and they were losers and shit <laughs> and over the years you know what I mean those places went out of business well yeah because in 1990 average it was just starting to be where a video a, a camcorder was an average person could buy one uh, they were still, you know, in 1990, you could get one for probably about a cheap one, about 350 bucks. But these stores would get one about, for, you know, a little $500 one, you know, and and you could you could have a whole business around videotaping motherfuckers and putting them up on VHS tapes, and you know, they they paid like a hundred dollars to join, and then a certain, you know, probably like a hundred dollars a month to fucking go in there and rent these things, and when they all went out of business. Over time, those businesses, you know, they, they had all those tapes. And they've kind of leaked out onto the internet. You can find them. They're fucking pitiful. Fucking pitiful. Some people would, like, go through a whole production 
they dress up and go through a skit and fucking read in lines. It's just man, shit was cringy as shit. Well, I think with they, ni- I think they really nailed that shit. with this yeah. movie. Actually, <laughs> nineteen ninety really hair it. and fucking weird, sh- you know, just people were fucking weird, man, back then. <laughs> I didn't remember them being that weird, but I guess they were just weird on camera. It's really weird whenever we yeah. watch some shit from nineteen ninety, like because we've seen like some dead mall videos that had yeah. footage from nineteen ninety or movies from nineteen ninety. And I'm like, God damn, I forgot how 80s the 1990s the 90s still were. looked. And the, 80s, and, the ni- and the 80s were still kind of 70s. People forget yeah, that. Yeah, they too. were. So there was kind of... And another thing that was weird is um, looking back on it, how uncomfortable everyone was on video. Because you you, you never really... It was rare to have yeah, a Yeah, it wasn't something anyone was used to. Nowadays, because of phones, you know what I mean? People get real comfortable. Well, yeah, now because everybody's yeah. videotaping themselves like all right. the time. It's, it's like, hey, look, I'm sitting on the can. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> and you know, like anybody can be real comfortable in front of a huge crowd. I mean, you know, they got guys fucking like, streaming. They got 300,000 people fucking like, watching the stream. And a dude's just, yeah, whatever, yeah. Shit, try that on stage. You'd fucking freeze up on stage fright. Yeah. But uh, just people are. And then, and it's funny because like some of the professional actors we grew up with, they can't handle social media. Like, Johnny Depp. He tried to stream himself, and he just looked awkward as fuck. Yeah, it's like well, it's two different... Two different platforms. Pla- like, yeah, it's kind of two different things. I mean, the thing, yeah. like, the shit that we do, and the thing that a lot of you, of people that are on YouTube that people like and relate to is is that the people seem like real people. You know yeah. what I mean? Well, we are real people. You know what yeah. I mean? This is this is what we're like, like, all the time. Yeah, we're not, De- like, putting yeah, anything Depp on. Can't, Depp can't be a real person <laughs> fucking live. He's trying to go be... He's trying to be... Johnny Depp and, uh, uh, and and the awkwardness is just cringy. It doesn't it doesn't yeah. translate to twenty twenty. Well, what are you gonna do? Yeah. But yeah, so so this poor dude, it's in one of the best scenes, and I don't think that you saw this one, but he yeah. was actually going because he he keeps like hoping that he's gonna get matched with somebody, but it's been six months. He's been a um, member and he hasn't gotten matched with any women yet. So he kind of calls and they're like, well, we see that you haven't made a new video in six months and maybe you should come and make a new video and we'll put you back in circulation and stuff. So he goes down there to do it. And the first one that he does is actually pretty good. Like he goes on and it seems really heartfelt and everything. And then the guy behind the, t- the thing is like, okay, um, that was fine, but it can only be 30 seconds long. And he's like, 30 seconds long? He's like, I... I've watched people's, you know, the women's ones that are longer than that. He's like, oh, yeah, well, the women get a lot longer because there aren't as many women. It's like we have so many guys that come in here to do it that we have to keep them to 30 seconds. Otherwise, like the tapes would be fucking nine hours long. So then it's so then, of course, he only has 30 seconds. So he has to like make it shorter. And it's then it's like sounds really, really terrible. Uh, I live with my mother and I want you to take care of me. And (laughs) you know what I mean? It was like, but it sounded good before. So he does that. And he still doesn't get any matches for a while. Now, while he's in the in the place, you know, this little center or whatever, he sees this bin that has all these videotapes in it. And he sees one in there that's called Rent-A-Pal. And he's, for whatever reason, he decides he's going to buy it or rent it. I guess you buy it because he doesn't take it back. Now, this Rent-A-Pal video, I love that in the movie, they don't explain who this dude is, why he made this video, or why any of it. You know what I mean? It's just this really weird video with fucking Will Wheaton in a fucking V-neck sweater being as creepy as fucking possible. He's kind of like Mr. Rogers, but a really, really creepy version. <laughs> like, he's super overly nice and overly... And the the tape is so weird. It's just him sitting in a chair and with a little phone and a little lamp and everything. And he's talking to you... As though he's really talking to you. Like, he asks you questions and he leaves a gap so you can answer. And it's, like, the weirdest shit ever. So I guess he kind of rented it as a lark. And then he starts watching it. And at first he thinks it's he's like, this is the fucking stupidest, weirdest shit I've ever seen. Which it is. But the more that he watches it, he kind of gets sucked into it. And he starts to, like, David starts to think that... I mean, I guess his sense of reality starts to skew a little bit where he thinks that this, that Will Wheaton, whose character's name is Andy, on the tape is actually talking to him and actually is his only friend. This is, that's the part that kind of reminded me of Videodrome. Yeah. It's like a Videodrome vibe to it, where the TV's talking back to you. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty weird. And I like that they kind of leave it. They never explain it. They leave it ambiguous. Like I said, they leave it ambiguous. You know, why did Andy make this video? Um, You know, why was it there? What's going on with it? You know, who is this guy? They don't go into his backstory or anything like that. This is the only time you see him is on this videotape that, you know, David starts playing over and over because he starts getting obsessed with it. And... And they also leave it kind of ambiguous, I guess. I guess you could say they leave it ambiguous. Whether the videotape has some kind of weird, uh, like, paranormal, like, or supernatural kind of power to it. Or whether David is just projecting his own, you know, uh, escalating madness onto it, maybe. Like, he's starting to perceive that he thinks that that the videotape, the guy on the videotape is like a real person that's talking to him in real time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So he starts getting involved with this videotape and he keeps watching it over and over. And then like, he starts doing shit. Like at one point on the videotape, Andy plays go fish with the person who's watching the videotape. And David even goes so far as to like make it so that his hand is what Andy says it's going to be. He's like, oh, two sevens. And he's like, oh, yay, I have two sevens. You know what I mean? So they can play. Because obviously the tape is the same every single time you play it. Now, it happens that when he starts getting obsessed with the tape, it so happens that he gets matched with a woman uh, from the video rendezvous thing. And she's like the perfect match, right? She's per- She's also a caregiver. She works at uh, like a nursing home. So he, so she understands like that he has to take care of his mom and she, know- she works with people like that all the time. So she gets where he's coming from. They have a date. It goes awesome. But then, um, like I said, whether it's the videotape or whether it's just David flipping out, um, things start to go horribly, horribly awry with maybe Andy on the videotape not liking that David now has a girlfriend and he just wants, he just wants David all for himself, I guess. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's a really, really, it's weird, but there's something really, there was something really compelling about it. And I think I really, really liked the score. I really, really liked the whole look of it. Like it looks very much like 1990. Uh, you know what I mean? It's not, it doesn't look like, oh, it's today and we're making a movie set back in 1990. Aren't we cute? It looked like everything in there was like 1990. And it was kind of like the house that he lived in with his mom. It was just super depressing. And his character, I think he did a good job because, I mean, Will Wheaton was fucking great in this. He was, like I said, he was overly nice, but to a, to an extent that it was like really sinister. Like it started getting really sinister after a while. But the um, Brian Fokin's character... That very easily could have shaded over into just being pathetic and you not, you know, you being like, what a pitiful, you know, specimen. But he actually does a good job at making him kind of pathetic, but also sympathetic. You know what I mean? Like you feel bad for him. You want him to have a girlfriend. You want him, you know, you don't want him getting sucked into this fucking videotape weird fantasy that he has going. So it's like you're kind of rooting for him. But then at the same time, like when shit starts going sideways. So it's almost like. I don't want to say it's sad, but it is like, it's like a tragic story, I guess. And I think that it, it is that just because the acting was so good. Like, especially the two of them. There's a couple other characters too, like the mom and the girlfriend and stuff, but it's mostly just the two of them. And I don't know. I just, I just really, really liked this. I thought it was really compelling. It kind of really kept me, it sucked me right in and just kind of, I was just like riveted the whole time I was watching it. Yeah, like I said, I only saw about half of it, the last half. Yeah. It was good. And Um, it's, yeah, because it starts, it's, I don't necessarily want to call it a slow burn. I don't, I don't think it was that slow. Um, It's mostly, but it's mostly like psychological shit. But then like the last maybe 15, 20 minutes of it goes like batshit crazy. If you liked Joker, you'd like this. Yeah. If you'd like Videodrome, you'd like this. Uh, It, what else? Yeah, I'm trying to think of like other things that it kind of reminded me yeah, of. Things that you that you'd like if you if you like those movies, you'd like this one. You know, about it probably. Yeah, yeah. I think it's it's interesting too because I think it was kind of cool that they set it back in 1990, and so that you have kind of the whole nostalgia thing of you know how yeah. cheesy like the video dating services were and stuff. 
But it's almost like it could apply to modern day too, like modern day yeah. social media, just like in a different format. Right. So, you know what I mean? So it's kind of like universal, even though it had the trappings of 1990 with all the fucking VHS tapes and all that other kind of shit. Yeah. But yeah, uh, if you're into those dead mall videos like I am at Urban Exploration, it, it, it's got that look. Yeah, this would probably, yeah. probably be uh, yeah. right up your alley. Like, is it, yeah. it's, you know, it's just, it's a great looking movie, and I think it was like a really well written movie, and the characterization is really, really good. <coughs> Crappy old cars. Crappy yeah. old cars from the late 70s and 80s yeah. and 90s fucking driving around there, yeah. <laughs> Actually, it's taken 1990. In 1990, you didn't see many 1990 cars. You mostly saw 80s cars. Yeah. With some it's... 70s cars. Because a 1990 car was fucking brand new. You didn't see very many of them. Well, yeah, because most people in 1990 couldn't afford to fucking... Yeah. I think I didn't even buy... I didn't even buy my first car until maybe 1995 or 1996, and it was a 1987 Some of the car. early... <laughs> some of the early 90s cars, you know, like the Toyotas and stuff, were just old, also 80s cars, dressed up. Yeah. Different paint jobs, different accessories on them. You know, like the Corollas and stuff. You know? Look, it's the still 90s the now. It's yeah. the future. Yeah, and for like all of the 95, you'd still have late 80s cars in there, just kind of fucking different body panels on them. Yeah, it's just, yeah. it's funny when you were living through it, I, I thought that I remembered, like, as soon as 1990, 1991 hit, because 1990, I graduated from high school, and 1991, like, when grunge came in and all that kind of shit, I don't remember it still looking like the 80s. I guess I'm it still, did. like, perceiving, you know, when I think about the 90s or the early 90s, I used to think of, like, grunge shit, like, you know, everybody wearing flannel shirts and all that kind of crap, and, like, everybody kind of going back to looking like hippies and whatnot, but... Then when I see movies from 1990, like, everyone's still got big hair and yep. fucking shoulder pads and, like, all yep. the fucking neon colors and shit. I'm like, really? Was that freak? It's yep. like, I don't know. It's I, It was a long time ago, so it's hard for me to remember. And if you look at old video, you know, old home video from the late, uh, from the 80s, mid, mid to late 80s. Because, you know, some people have video cameras, especially at, at, at shopping malls and stuff. You know, 87, 86... I forgot how Soviet the fucking United States looked. Everything looked really cheap. Yeah, everything was cheap, cheap and ugly. Cheap materials, square, <laughs> cheap manufacture. Everything looked really disposable. Disposable consumer products. Just samey. Just cheap looking clothes. Everybody wore cheap looking clothes. Something about the materials and the cuts. It just didn't look good. I still remember like the all colors. the all the furniture and shit in people's houses and yeah. like the that crappy like <coughs> plasticky wood paneling yeah. shit. Yeah, and that crappy fucking the uh, the uh, the patterns on all the material for the for, for on the couches. You know, just fucking ugh. I know everything was Ugly. just so ghastly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and even real expensive furniture like be leather and shit it looked like shit too i was never was a big just... fan of those because i feel like that was kind of a big thing particularly in the 80s every yeah. if, if you had a lot of money you had like those big puffy like leather, leather ones, couches yeah. i never i didn't like those even back then i thought no. they were ugly back ugly. then yeah and then they put a fucking nagel they put a fucking nagel poster patrick behind, nagel yeah patrick nagel print behind it and fucking some stainless stainless steel fucking floor lamp that came out with a triangle top on it trying to be all it was modern modern looking and it just looked fucking like something out of a two-bit porn flick it you did know, sort of like well and terrible. i have to think too like in my grandma's house i think sometime in the 80s she got like some of those puffy leather cat leather i don't think it was real leather but it was kind of like leatherette couches <coughs> they were yeah. white pleather yeah i think the reason that maybe it's because i grew up in florida and all you can remember is just your the backs of your thighs sticking to that shit yeah, sweating <laughs> just sweating all over it it was so gross yeah that's like all i remember about leather couches from back yeah. in the day just see your ass getting all sweaty from like sitting on it i remember some of the 70s stuff looking better than a lot of the 80s stuff yeah almost like the quality might have been a little bit better in the 70s 60s, throw, 60s, I think it was. Yeah. Fourth yeah. row down said literally everyone had a perm. Yeah. I think they did. I, ha I had a perm until, well, I had perms in the 80s, but my hair does not, my hair just like wants to be straight. So I had my great aunt was a hairdresser and she, I used to every now and then have her come over and try to do like a ringlet type of perm because I always wanted like ringlets. And it's like it would stay for a day and it would I'd be like, woo, look, it's all curly. And then like the next day it'd be like, Pfft. 
and it would just fall right out. I've got to look back, see if anybody studied that period, you know, living through it. You know, we just kind of took it for granted. But I just remember that there was an abundance of stuff, but it was all cheap stuff. Yeah. So I guess it was there was an economic boom and a lot of rapid growth. and But it wasn't made out of stuff that built to last, really. It was just made for high profit and for very low retail value. You know what I mean? So you could buy it cheap. And they could they sold a lot of it, you know, furniture and clothes, and it just everybody thought it was rich, but it was like fake rich. Yeah. Everybody could just fucking you know decorate, just decorate the shit out of this. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> We're nouveau riche. We're gonna bitches. decorate the shit out of this place. You know? <laughs> Cardboardy looking crap, fucking you know, cheap looking linoleum countertops and stuff. Oh man, I hate it. Remember those. those things? Yeah. Cheap linoleum floor tiling that would fucking over time would start to fucking warp, warp, and yeah. it didn't really stick right. It just yeah, everything looked like crap. <laughs> it looked good when you bought it, and then like two years later, it was just fucking falling apart. Yep. Sad, I remember. Right? Don't build a shit wherever the last. wherever the refrigerators were, there'd be like a fucking warp running around yep. with the refrigerator putting too much pressure on it. Yep. Yeah, I remember that. And then like the heat from the fucking stove would get to it, warp around the fucking stuff. <laughs> The broiler in the bottom of the <laughs> yeah. Fucking fuck up your linoleum tile. That's why all that shit went away. It didn't work. Then they replaced all... Eventually, everybody replaced all that shit with real tile. Yeah. You can't get... Well, you know, they sold you the fantasy that, hey, for real cheap, we can cover this whole thing. It's just as good. It's high tech. Yeah. Just as good as fucking real fucking tiles, you know? No, it wasn't. No. Fucking well, yeah. plastic sheet on the fucking floor. Yeah. Pretty much. To see if anybody has remembered those days. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you kind of had a you kind of had a mullet a little bit in the eighties. Everybody did. Yeah. Everybody did. It was, I didn't it was have, long though. That was like I, long hair. Yeah. Mine was not. I I don't know if I'd call mine a mullet <coughs> as so much as like, in the eighties, like when I was in junior high, I had kind of a shag cut. Yeah. That was kind of mullety i don't know if i'd call it a mullet it wasn't like super short in the i had that fucking rick springfield slash fucking um fucking um andrew eldridge haircut yeah because andrew if you really analyzed it andrew eldridge's haircut was fucking just a long version of rick springfield's haircut that was totally a mullet and it's like a mullet yeah that's that's what i had fucking thought I was a member of the fucking Sisters of Mercy. It's really funny because I feel like the mullet didn't really get the redneck tag until later in the 80s because I feel like in the early yeah. 80s it was more like a new wavy look. Yeah, it was thing. like a new wave look. You're like, oh, it's punk rock, you know yeah. what I mean? But then, like, yeah. as the mid-80s... Well, like, what the happened was the fucking the, the WWF wrestlers started, started to, to get it. That. And, then it went, it, and then fucking everybody in the panhandle and all the dudes of the 4 by 4s and shit had that. And then all so the all the new wave and punk kids were like, okay, we can't yeah, do yeah, that anymore. Yeah, can't wear that shit. All the rednecks are <laughs> on that shit. Fucking just a few years before, the lead singer Kajagoogoo had that <laughs> yeah. shit. Lamal. Yeah, you know. He's but, too shy, shy. Too shy, shy, shy. <laughs> But now you got rednecks with that fucking haircut, man. It's like I ridiculous. Know. Embarrassing. Fucking they're dipping and shit. They got a fucking Peterbilt fucking baseball cap on. Looking like Joe Dirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. They were what they were. Yeah, they were funny though, man. Most of those guys, if you if you knew those guys, like my dad, fucking my dad's friends were like that. <clears throat> they were funny. They fucking just they would get drunk in the middle of the day. They'd work. They work real hard. Fucking yeah, rebuild fucking car engines drunk on the their own. The They'd be drunk in the middle of the day, <laughs> standing out back of your house, fucking just coming up with the craziest fucking shit. That's where hold my beer came from. Yeah. Oh really? Hold my beer. <laughs> fucking, he's gonna do it. You know. What do you mean you can't ride on an upside down lawnmower? I can ride a lawnmower upside down. Hold my beer. You know, I'm fucking gonna try to ride on a lawnmower and a fucking blade going his nuts fucking dangling right above the blade. Just redneck what do you mean I can't shoot an anvil out of a cannon? Yeah, I can right. totally we, do that. We used to do that. I know. Shooting anvils out of a cannon. We do that. Yeah, hold my beer. Thank that, you, that, Mango. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Mango. I mean, that's... that's Dollar for Pastor Tom. Pass me the Gatorade. Yeah. <laughs> This, people, people, you know, I was lucky enough to fucking grow up around real rednecks down in fucking deep south Mississippi. All right. They're not even really rednecks. They're just fucking southern, fucking super, super <laughs> southern, you know? And 
the the rednecks that you saw on TV were imitations of these guys. You know what I mean? And the rednecks up north, they had rednecks up north. They got they, rednecks everywhere. They were just everywhere. They're co- they were copying our rednecks. Our rednecks were the originals. <laughs> we have the OG rednecks. Yeah. <laughs> right. You Their guys are dads, just poser rednecks. Yeah. And a lot of them, if the ones that were like maybe ten, the one the little ones that were a little bit older that they looked up to, the the rednecks looked up to some guys that were like twenty years older than them. And those motherfuckers were the embodiment of cross between Colonel Sanders and Foghorn Leghorn. They they were literally say I say what boy say oh well, hold on boy step aside step aside <laughs> let me have crackers real fucking crackers that's exactly what they were. Oh 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 hold on now hold on now yeah. Come here. And they called everybody boy. Come here, yeah. boy. <laughs> yes, sir, <re>, boy. <laughs> Fucking hilarious. It's like Foghorn Leghorn. They didn't know. Yeah, just like Foghorn Leghorn. That's what <laughs> no, Foghorn Leghorn was a was, cracker. Yeah. All right. Oh, big and, time. And, and uh, fuck, man. Growing up around those dudes is a fucking trip, man. So you trying to kind of dress them funny. Where you from? <laughs> Spending too much time in California. With all the fruits and the nuts. <laughs> Come here, boy. Let me show you. Take them socks off. And three, get them three striped socks. Then three striped socks. No, no. Uh. <laughs> remember back in the seventies and eighties, the three striped socks. And yeah, shit? I remember those. Yeah, yeah. Fog or leg or get pissed off. <laughs> you saw you wearing that shit. <laughs> Hawaiian shirts. Mm. You're not in Hawaii. That's Mississippi, boy. Mm. <laughs> you you almost sounded like Sling Blade there for a second. Yeah, yeah. Well, he would have been a cracker. Yeah, he's a cracker. Right. French fried potatoes. Mm. Yeah, and, uh, and trying to explain some shit for some of you Europeans. And, <laughs> Some and some of our African Americans, a cracker is a white guy, but they're not calling him a cracker because of the, because of white skin. White people called them crackers. They wore back in the day. They wore white suits. They were white guys. They wore white suits. They walked around and looked like, and they were cracker jacks, like a cracker jack, fucking looking yeah. like a pimp. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they walked around just, like glowing. Yeah, they walked around. Right. They were all fucking dressed up, and they were <laughs> they were dandies, but like the ultimate. Was the white suit, and you know, and that would have been Colonel Sanders. Colonel Sanders was a, a Kentucky Colonel, which was a cracker. He's a cracker. He just a, he was famous. You know, you could get a Kentucky commission as a colonel. It's an honorary title, and they gave that to dudes just because they look sharp. Imagine that. That's the way the old Southern culture was. That's fucking crazy. Think about that. You're yeah. dressed up, and everybody likes you, so we're gonna make you a colonel. Yeah. Meanwhile, real colonels are like real colonels are in the army. And fucking, they just, <laughs> it's a Kentucky colonel. Yeah, you're just representing. Yeah. <laughs> representing. White pimping. White. It was white pimping. <laughs> fucking exactly. I said, "Come on here, boy. Come here. Come here, boy." Mm-hmm. That's the way they were. You know what? It's really funny that one of the one of the cartoons that I remember from my childhood was a Foghorn Leghorn cartoon. Yeah. It was that one where it was that little chick with the glasses that was like a super genius. And uh I still remember that scene where he the little chick had like drawn all of this like formulas and shit like that and uh Foghorn Leghorn was like hiding where he was hiding in like a dumpster or a box or something like that and then he came out but then you know, the he's like, yeah. I don't, don't even tell me. I might be in there. You know yeah. what I mean? It was like, it's just a funny, funny cartoon. I hope you guys know what I'm talking about. Because yeah. I can't remember exactly what... what. Yeah, Badger saying they had a show called Cracker Jack in the, in the UK. When you, Back in the old, back in the 20s and 30s, they'd say somebody was looking at Cracker Jack. I mean, they were just looking really sharp. Now, how old is the Cracker Jacks? It's not candy. It's, it's, popcorn, a, it's popcorn with like... It's probably 20. With molasses or caramelly type it, shit on it. Is it molasses? Yeah. What the fuck's it's on can, it? No, it's caramel. Caramel popcorn. I mean, it's dark. It's darker than caramel, but um, and it's got peanuts in it too. You yeah. used to get at the movies. Yeah. So you know, looking Cracker Jack just meant you were looking good. I'm pretty and sure they still make that. They just shorted that shit to Cracker. It had little prizes inside. Yeah. Looking Cracker. Like little tattoos and shit. Yeah. And I guess the white suits too, and the white face, and the fucking looking Cracker. You just look like a looking Cracker walking around. Yeah, you look like a big old saltine. Yeah, a big old saltine. <laughs> With arms bitches, and legs. Bitches just sitting on the porch drinking lemonade. <laughs> Or a mint julep. Or a mint julep. <laughs> with a cane. And they dressed older than they were. Fuckers would be like fucking 30 and they dressed like that. Like Bell they were Bell. already old men. Come here, boy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Come here, boy. <laughs> come up here. Come up here. Come up here and see your uncle. <laughs> sit down. Sit, 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 sit right chair. Sit right chair. Sit, sit, sit right chair. Yeah. Yeah. They did say chair. Chair. Sit right chair. 
Yeah, my grand my grandma said yeah. that too. <laughs> all right, are we are we done for the yeah, day? Yeah, I'm done. Fucking I'm starving. I haven't like yeah, I haven't eaten anything all day, and it's like three yeah. thirty. Holy crap! We have to go find some food before I pass out. Yeah. All right. So uh, yeah. So like I said, uh, this is Renapal. It's on Hulu. Might be on some other streaming services. Check it out. But we saw it on Hulu. It's really really good. I really really liked it. So check it out if you're into psychological horror or anything like that, or like kind of retro movies. And uh, we will be back tomorrow talking about another movie. So thanks, everybody, for dropping by. Thank you, Mango, for the donation. And we'll see you guys tomorrow.